Okay. What? To the left. Okay. Yeah. To the left, to the left. Everybody in Diddy's freak off to the left. Why? To me, right? Jay-Z, Beyonce, Illuminati. George Soros. And a oop. Greetings, Internet. Welcome to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hello. Hello, honey. Thank you for joining me on our bed for our little program here. Okay. So we got Papa Murphy's on Friday night. Uh, it's the first time we've gotten it in a while. There was a Papa Murphy's near you at your old place. Um, and we actually got it back then in our tour love affair. Um, but it never floats to the top of our thoughts. Um, what does Papa Murphy's mean to you in your life, honey? Nothing. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the Papa Murphy's. I, it's like low tier yeah. pizza chain for me. And I don't like that you have to bring it home and cook it yourself. Right. Right. It's that's always bothered me. Like, uh, like what, what, what you, you, the pizza places, pizzerias should have, uh, oven that cooks at 800 degrees so they can nuke your pie in 45 seconds or something. Uh, and yeah. And the fact that you have to bring it home, and I realize it's cheaper, um, which is why we actually got it, because pies are getting to be near $30. Uh, when you talk about Round Table, even Pizza Hut, um, Little Caesars is getting up there around 20 for a large. So I was like, let's try Papa Murphy's uh, and see what happened. So I download the app, and I kept getting an error. Like, it wouldn't let me order error it kept get saying invalid tender and i was like what and i use this credit card all the time for e-commerce purchases and transactions i don't know what's going on with their app so i just I took a deep breath and i said i'm gonna walk in and talk to their employees and order something why did life have to be so hard <laughs> i don't know so i walk in uh, a couple young gentlemen they both had beards. Now listen, you want to have a beard? You want to look like ZZ Top? That's great. But you got to cover it up when you work in food. Absolutely. They have those little beer covers, like the, yeah, the hair head net, hair net thing. Hair net, beard net. And I was like, what's going on here? And I know you look silly, but who cares? <laughs> You're working at Papa Murphy's, which is a fine uh, calling. Um so right there i was put off another thing is that the price in store did not match the app so in this case the xlny pizza with pepperoni and sausage cost 9.99 in the app and then 11.99 uh in brick and mortar and you might say that's only two dollars but as grandma tian says no one gives you two dollars okay two dollars can go a long way you could buy lots of breath mints and gum with that. Um, and so I have the app and I'm like showing it to him on my telephone. Please don't touch my telephone, Mr. Beard. Uh, but I'm like, uh, yeah, your app, I, I would order through this, but it's giving me an error. Uh, and can you just price match this? No, no, they wouldn't do it. They don't care. And I don't blame them. They don't want to get involved in the app and the internet and software, but... The extra two dollars, I almost went postal. I almost had a public freak out, threw a tantrum, started throwing cash registers against their wall, but I didn't. I decided better. Uh, so the dough is raw. That's fine. Um, everything looks hecka small. You, you don't realize uh, how much dough, how little dough is, or how tiny your pie looks uh, before it's baked. Um, brought it home. And that was another thing. Why don't they have boxes? Yeah, they're really flimsy on those little paper trays. Yeah. And then they saran wrap it. But then you got to walk out to your car. And th this particular Papa Murphy's had a heavy door. I hate those heavy doors. You're like pushing on the door. Mm -hmm. I like, I got the pizzas uh, in my arms. I don't want to fall. Yeah, it's very, uh, 
very precarious. Um, bring them home, and uh, you took over, honey. Yeah, you said get cooking, woman. Yeah, well, that's why I got married. Um, uh, yeah, talk about the process and how you cooked it. Uh, so we got two pizzas, a cheese, and then the XL New York with all the meat on it. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I can cook these at the same time. Yeah. Because the instructions said if it's a thin thin crust, put it on the lower level. So, yeah. okay. I put them two levels, both at the same time in the oven. Yeah. Cooked it. I, I wasn't sure. Am I cooking it the right amount of time? Because yeah. our oven, uh, I, I usually need to do a little extra time when I'm baking anything. Yeah. So you just don't know. And then we also got um, a little container of monkey bread, which also was raw. Yeah. So I had to cook that, and I put that in the toaster oven. Yeah. And we set it all for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then it looked really good while it was baking. Yeah. So took it out, and oh, we don't have a pi- okay. We don't have a pizza cutter. Correct. Yeah. Why don't we own a pizza cutter? I'm not sure, but whenever you need to cut pizza, when you make pizza for Lennox, you always use scissors. I do use scissors a lot in the kitchen. Yeah, they're very handy. So I just cut our pizzas with these scissors. And I realized the dough was hecka hard. The crust was so crispy. Yeah. I guess I overcooked it, even though I followed the instructions. Yeah, it's super thin. Well, they throw in the legalese, the fine print, like, uh, ovens vary. Your oven may vary. All ovens are different. Uh, and then at uh, in Denver, I know that uh, because you're so high up, mile high or stadium or whatever, um, that affects cooking times, too. Cooking times, too. Yes. And that uh, so going back to not having a flippin' oven, uh, you're throwing, you're living by chance. It's all, it's so risky. Just buy a gosh dang oven, Senior Murphy. Um, and then, and then you don't realize cutting is a big deal. Uh, when Little Caesars or Pizza Hut or whatever, when they slice your pie in eight slices, for instance, that's invaluable. Because when you were trying to cut it, the dough was sticking to the giant paper plate. Right. So I start cutting the cheese pizza. Yeah. And the crust is really crispy, but it it, it was fine. It is thin crust, so yeah. And, and I... Yeah, that's good. I cut it perfectly, actually. The slices were, like, very equal and beautiful. So then I move on to the the meat pizza. Yeah. And immediately, like, <laughs> the bottom is stuck to the paper tray that you yeah. are supposed to bake it on. Yeah. So uh, I was like, honey, (laughs) I got a spatula and I started like trying to scrape it all around. Yeah. Uh, I was using my fingernail to scrape the sticky dough off the ginormous paper plate they hand you. Um, But on the other hand, no dough, low carb, keto, ever hear of it? Hmm. You said just bring it over to the table and I'll just rip it apart. (laughs) And that's That's what we did. That's when my caveman instincts took over, honey. Uh, The monkey bread. uh, It was weird. It tasted, it was bread, but it was, and it got super hard. I I guess I overcooked it, I guess, but I I did a couple minutes above what it recommended. Yeah. It should not have turned out that hard. It was like rocks, yeah. little rocks. Well, it was it was hard, but then with every pack passing second with oxygen uh, taking over and uh, oxidizing the dough, if you will. Oh, wow. I feel like Bill Nye, the science guy. Uh, it was just getting harder and harder and harder uh, to the point that we stopped eating it. Uh, it was like we were racing against the clock and we lost. Um, as far as the pie, XL, NY. I really liked it, the thin crusts, and they go hard. They go ham on the seasonings, uh, whatever it is, oregano, uh, some sort of Italian seasonings. I really liked it. It's a fine pie. Uh, what would you think of, because you had some of the XLNY, you had, uh, we got a cheese for Luna. I liked the XLNY. It just, it was like a pile of of undercooked dough and meat. Yeah. So it wasn't, it was not in a pizza shape, but it was really good. Yeah. The flavor and seasonings were really good. Like you said, I liked it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The cheese was fine. Yeah. It was crispy. If you like a crispy thin crust pizza. Yeah. I like my pizza a little thicker, a little more juicy and doughy and yeah. greasy and, so, but it was fine. Yeah. It's just, it's too much work. 
for you. <laughs> not for me. I just eat. I sit at the table and I eat because I am dumb, big, strong man. Uh, but doing all the work, it's Papa Murphy's is the self checkout of the pizzeria industry. Um, it's just, it's too much heartache. Uh, yeah, too much angst and stress. And with, uh, for uh, in this example, in this case, yeah. not a good payoff. Right. I messed up a lot of the food, or I don't know, maybe I couldn't have done it well. It yeah. was out of my hands. Yeah, well, there was too much risk, too much chance, and uh, we got burnt. Uh, I but... literally burned my finger, actually. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Senior Murphy invest in some ovens and some boxes cardboard ever hear of it and some beer guards beer nets some oh yes for your employees yes yeah, yeah, yeah uh i well actually saturday i wanted papa murphy's again uh but i was just like ah, I, I would not let you go back honey ah uh, there's little caesars right there there's a uh, marcos but then you're starting to get pricey um there's uh, local pizzerias, uh, but then you're getting, again, more pricey. So, I don't know. I'm sure we'll do it again sometime. You know what? Frozen Totino's is the way to go. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Every time. You know what? Papa Murphy's. The Little Caesars is just across the street. Grab some uh, raw pizza. Bring it to Little Caesars. Hey, can you throw this in the oven for uh, six minutes? There you go. Got yourself a nice hot pie uh saturday we went to grocery outlet bargain market uh saw carla so she brought up something uh she wakes up at 4 a.m for her uh, early morning shift at gobm the grow show if you will that's what they call it on reddit honey grocery Sh grow grow Gro show grocery outlet grosh grow show yeah grosh and then Oh, for you skip outlet? to the O. Grow show. <laughs> skip okay. to the outlet part. Uh, she wakes up at 4 a.m. And she said she doesn't need a clock because she turns on the TV and leave it to Beavers on, whatever channel that's on. Uh, and so she knows she has a half hour um, to get ready. And so the first commercial break, second commercial break, she don't, she don't need no clock. Remember when TV shows were half hour? Yes. Okay, 22 minutes with ads. Let's be honest. Um, but it was something consistent and you could count on it. Yeah. I vaguely remember like marking the time by when a program ended. Yeah. I, I, once she said that, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That is how it used to be. Yeah. It was a half hour or an hour. Uh, Ted Turner turned us all around with his uh, t TV show starting at 105 and 135. Um, he was a he was a reckless daredevil, um, but it was a good time when TV shows were consistent and dependable. Uh, we let a guy go in front of us. He looked like a buff Alex Hirsch. Um, he didn't have much. We had a lot, and so we let him go. But then we started checking out, and there was a guy behind us. He had uh, all of his uh, groceries in his arms. He didn't grab a cart, which, listen, I've been there, bro. We've all been there, um, but he had a pint of ice cream in the elbow. What is that? Where you the, the opposite of the elbow? I call it an elbow pit. Ah, elbow crevice. Oh, El is it a crook? Yes, it's a crook. <laughs> uh, but you don't keep your ice cream there. That that area, your elbow pit, gets super hot. Oh yeah. So why are you holding your ice cream there? I, I mean, at that point, you just got to go get a cart. Man, uh, then we did Walmart grocery pickup. So, um, what did what did you discover in our in our haul, darling? Uh, two of our I well, one of our items was expired, yeah. and one was going to expire the next day. Right, and this is the market side uh, proteins from the deli. Uh, market side is Walmart's in house generic uh, brand for. Uh, fresh food stuff. Um, so I hopped on the Walmart chat and they've always been good. It takes a couple minutes, uh, but they've always been good about refunding stuff. This happens, I don't want to say once a month, but <laughs> once every two months about that. Uh, so the one expired a week ago, 
okay, definitely. But then the one expires the next day. It was Saturday, expires Sunday. I was like, if we were in Walmart, we wouldn't have bought that. No, I wouldn't because these protein things are a staple to our weeknight food, our weeknight dinners. Yes. So I'm not going to cook this till Tuesday or Wednesday. Right. And it's going to be expired by then. Right. So it's essentially expired. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I hop on the Walmart chat, get a customer service representative. And I was like, I'm just going to say both are expired. And yes, I lied, but it's fine. Walmart is a billion dollar uh, c- grocery conglomerate. I don't think they'll miss it. So I put my cards, all my cards out on the table um, and I said, we got two expired proteins. I would just like $14 and 66 pack. And when you do it through the you click, click, clack, clack through the website, they always say, okay, return these to the store and we'll give you credit. But uh, I never want to go back to the store. And so I lied to the customer service representative. I say, I don't have time. And uh, those pro- those items stink. So we threw them away in our kitchen. Although, why would we throw them away in our kitchen trash if they stunk? But anyways, uh, so I just want our 1466 back. And it took a couple minutes. But lo and behold, we got the 1466 back. So yes, I lied. But it's fine. I'll, I'll get past it. I'll sleep well at night. Uh, then we did Kaiser uh, next to Cal Expo. Was it a four points? Point West. Point West. Right uh, by the, yeah, the Cal Expo, the Arden Mall. Yeah. Uh, Kaiser Permanente. Uh, did our flu shots. We did this a year ago. Uh, actually, last November, uh, they told us. Um, I've never been into flu shots until our tour love affair began, honey. Um, and I ain't dead, but you're pro f- flu shot. I can see it for the kids, but you do it too, and you make me do it. Yeah, before I had the kids, I was kind of hit and miss. Mm. Some years I'd get it, yeah, but I wasn't very consistent. But there were a couple of winters in a row where Lennox got super sick, and he was like sick on and off for the whole winter for months. Yeah. So I said, we're going to do this every year. Yeah. I'm not going to let it go. Yeah. And he hasn't been really sick like that ever since. Yeah. So I think for the kids, it helps. And then I go ahead and just get it myself. Yeah. Because why not? Yeah. And there was, so we've been there before uh, when they open at 830 and there's a throng of people. There's hundreds and hundreds of people, super long line. And yeah, they keep it moving, but you're there for a good half hour or so. Um, but this time we went at 1030, 1045. There was no line. We checked in. There might have been one minute wait while we just sat, stood there and waited for the next nurse to be available. Um, so yeah, we definitely will go from now on. We go at 10, 10 30. It's fine. Um, walk in and it's a small conference room. Uh, just a bunch of people getting shots, AKA Dr. Fauci's dream. Am I right? Uh, there's 10, 15 nurses all just giving the jab to various people, COVID and flu shots were being given. Uh, and I just looked at this scene. I was like, this is what Big Pharma wants. It's, this is what you want, honey. <laughs> it's like being married to Pfizer over here, people. Mm-hmm. Uh, my nurse, nice gal, did the jab, whatever. They ask you to confirm it. Like they sh- they showed me, she showed me the, the uh, syringe and it said flu zone on it. What, that sounds like a boy band, first of all. <laughs> flu zone. We, we sing about uh, romance and winter when you get sick. <laughs> Cuffing season. Uh, but she's like, this says flu zone, right? To confirm that I know what I'm doing and I'm ingesting it. And I guess so uh, they're not legally liable if I have a freak out or whatever. Um, but uh, I thought that was weird. I was like, oh, how about you do your job and just give me the jab of flu zone? Um and then simple, quick, easy. And then at the end, she said, okay, my dear, you're done. And I was like, listen here, lady, my wife's right over there. If you two want to tussle, please do it. Please pull each other's hair. And uh, let's uh, have some flowers, maybe. I'll throw some flowers while you guys uh, brawl 
and it'll be sexy and hot. Uh, and then we went to Kira Revolving Sushi Bar. You've been here before with Luna. Just uh, down the street in the Arden area. Um, each plate is $3.70. Uh, and we got, well, first I start, I don't like sushi. I almost went to the Vietnamese, uh, place, which is in the same shopping center. Uh, but we walked in, it was kind of groovy. It was a vibe. So I was like, okay, this, this, this could be cool. So we sit down and, uh, first thing I eat is, uh, some sort of seared beef. We shared it. And it comes on a small plate, and there's a little uh, conveyor belt train thing. You choo -choo 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 -choo, and uh, grab it, and it's two bites. It's two slices of steak on top of uh, a little bit of rice. And so you had one bite, I had the other. I thought it was fine, but I was like, okay, two bites for three dollars and seventy cents. I guess that's a good deal. Some of the plates are m worth the money more than the others. Uh, yeah. Some have like four or five bites. Mm. Some only have two. Yeah. And the and the beef was room temperature. And I was like, oh, this, I don't know. How about, how about you serve it hot? Uh, then Lennox got a rare Wagyu uh, plate with, again, two bites, two uh, slices of Wagyu steak super cold he had one he didn't want the other <laughs> so i was like oh, i'll try it i ate it it was just oh, slimy nasty gross <laughs> i i almost refunded it i almost <laughs> just spit it up into my napkin oh honey i know i, I didn't want to but it was just not not good well i think this place is a hit if you are a sushi fan mm -hmm. and if you are not then it's yeah. not going to be a good time for you go to the vietnamese place uh, i ordered some gyoza five dollars and 55 cents took a little while um and it was uh, again there's a different conveyor belt the higher train or whatever uh that the plate slides down it was fine um there's your standard uh gyoza um but I don't know, $5.55, whatever, for four of them, four tiny ones. Um, overall, it's fun. Like, I, I could see it. It's cool. But I found it annoying just waiting. You're, you're just sitting there watching the, what's next? Oh, crispy rice. Oh, tofu. I love that part of it. Yeah. That's the fun part of it to me. I'm here to eat. I ain't here to play no games, honey. And it's heck of disrupting to the conversation. You just, because you're constantly focused on, oh, there's some Wagyu. Oh, there's some sashimi. Oh, there's watermelon. And it's like, you, you can't get a good uh, uh, dialogue going. Um, another annoying thing was that there's one monitor at the table. Uh, it's a little high. And so I kept reaching over to browse or whatever, order tappity tap clickety clack and my arm just kept going over luna's food and i was like i'm sorry but uh, this is the monitor is over here um i don't know it's fine but you and luna will go back yeah. len, len said he wants to go back lennox really liked the california rolls um so he would go back and luna and i love it we're gonna go again yeah we didn't live a tip because there's no waiter very right. little interaction. Both times I've been, I haven't tipped. Yeah. And I am i don't feel good about it, but I can't justify it. Right. The only time I talked to a human was to ask for a fork. Right. You click on the monitor and to order drinks, and yeah. a little robot brings your drinks to your table. Yeah, yeah. And you just grab food off the conveyor belt. Yeah. So I, I don't think I should tip in that situation. Do yeah. you? Nah. Okay. She, yeah, she brought us forks, and they were plastic forks. Okay, really? <laughs> uh, and they did have ramen for like 11 12 bucks, and um, a big plate or bowl of, of uh, seared steak or beef for, again, 11 12 bucks. But I was, I was like, I don't know how much food that's going to be, how long it's going to take, and uh, it, was, it was fine. I'm glad you enjoyed it, uh, but I will not be back. I'll go somewhere else. There's many dining options in that shopping center. How about Arden? Oh my gosh. Jesus. Hi. And a oop. Okay. So Sunday, uh, we went to Costco. 
uh, got there at 8.45 ish. They open up at nine. We stayed in the car because we're professionals, but there were people lining up and, and the sun was out. It's a little, it's getting a little hot. It was, there was a little heat going on. Um, but they're just waiting for the doors to open. And Costco can, we, we've seen it open a few minutes early. Uh, and, and that's, and it does that. But wait in your car. It, it reminds me of people who get up when the plane lands, they get up right away. Oh, those are the worst people. Or when they say, uh, flight 232 boarding now. Uh, children, people in wheelchairs, old people, veterans. But then people stand up and it's like, and get in line. You're going to be standing up and standing there for 10, 15 minutes. Loser. I don't get it. And then there was a, a guy, but by, by, we, we were parked facing towards the Costco entrance. A uh, guy next to us was uh, facing away from the Costco entrance. So he kept having to look back. And I was like, you rookie noob. I felt bad for his neck. He kept having to crank his neck. See when people uh, would were being let in um one thing i got was uh garden crisp veggie crackers 16 ounce bag for eight bucks it looks so promising and i love the vegetable thins uh it's next to the wheat thins and the ritz in your normal grocery store uh i love those crackers they're super flavorful um but these were just eight and they cost eight dollars for 16 ounce bag and I was just like, you know what? Too many vegetables. Too many vegetables. The green box vegetable thins. There's probably like 0.001% vegetables in there. Um, but these Garden Crisp Veggie Crackers, $8, 16 ounces. They were fine. They were meh. But that just goes with Costco. Like, if you take a chance, you might get, get something you don't like. And it's not like a box of crackers at grocery outlet, grow show, if you will, uh, that it costs two or three bucks and you take a chance on some crackers. I don't like these. You could toss them or finish them or whatever. Um, but eight dollars, just I, I'm hesitant to uh, take chances on unknown products at the Costco. Uh, one thing I did was I texted my mom. Uh, that we were at Costco because she loves Costco. And uh, and I texted her a picture of their Christmas stuff because it's freaking September. Of course, they have tons of Christmas stuff out. Uh, and I, I said to you, honey, I said, watch, she's going to she's going to text back saying something along the lines of don't spend too much. And lo and behold, she did. She texted back saying, remember to live within your means. OK. We spent 80 bucks. Yeah. Which was was how much we spent at Kura. (laughs) That was her, mom. That wasn't me. That was my wife. (laughs) I felt like we were pretty restrained at Costco. We were. And we bought stuff like tomatoes, bread. Rotisserie chicken. We weren't going crazy. No. And I got a slice of pepperoni pizza at the end. Um, You got a hot dog. I got the classic $1.50 hot dog. Yeah. Uh, You put mustard on it. I still took a bite. I was like, this needs ketchup. No, 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 no. And no mustard. Yellow mustard on a hot dog is the only way to go. No, no, no. Maybe a dash of relish if you're feeling exotic. Wow. I'm I'm ketchup and onion. Uh, Saw Matt Weaver there, West Sacramento legend, owner of Results Gym. I always see someone I know. Every week you see someone you know. Every time we go. It's crazy. Either someone from my work, my current work, my old work, or uh, just someone I know, uh, a celebrity like Matt Weaver, who has listened to a podcast, uh, uh, owner of Results Gym. Hi, Matt. (laughs) Hey, Matt. How's it going? Uh, Hit that like button, subscribe, tell a friend, share. Uh, But then uh, that was Costco. Um, And then we went to a open house in... The old folks community in Natomas, not far from Costco. Uh, and so my mom is texting me about it and she's saying, uh, so this lady, I forget her name, Sarah, let's call her Sarah. Uh, I actually remember her name, but I'll just call her Sarah. Uh, for anonymity purposes, 
but she said Sarah bought this three years ago for four fifteen, and now she's selling it for four fifty nine. She's a flipper, but don't tell her you know she's a flipper. And I was like, oh, okay, mom, I don't, I don't need the whole. Uh, I I feel like I need to be prepped, like uh, in Mission Impossible, where they hand uh, Ethan Hunt uh, a folder. Here's the dossier of, of some pictures. Some notes, some documents. Burn after reading. A flash thumb drive. I was like, okay, okay, mom. And of course, she wants me to ask all these questions. Uh, do you like living here? Uh, why are you selling? And I, sometimes I ask, sometimes I don't. I, I don't. I just go and I'm like, this is a, a fine house. Um, and they need a new carpet. Uh, but she was a nice lady. And it was a fine home. And I, I don't know. Do you know what to ask? No. My mom wants, my mom, so last time she was up here, uh, we go to a house and the owner was there, a nice lady, whatever. Uh, me, you, and Grandpa Curtis leave the house. Uh, we're, we're on the sidewalk waiting to get in the car and leave. My mom, the realtor, and the owner were inside that house yapping it up for 20 25 maybe a half hour and it was hot it was sunny um and it was just like i that's what she wants she wants me to get the whole dossier get the whole house uh history and all that stuff i'm like mom i don't know just call her call sarah ask her some questions I don't, and i know i realize it's different irl in person but i don't i don't i don't have it in me i don't know what to ask yeah, maybe next time we need to like get a list, get yeah. a to-do list before ah, we go, so yeah. we can ask all the pertinent questions yeah. and not miss anything. Yeah, my mom is uh, Alec Baldwin, not from the Rust movie, from the Mission Impossible movies. I'll be Tom Cruise, and then uh, she can give me the lowdown on the mission. Uh, then you and Lennox had a uh, mommy-son date. Um, I see here in my notes there were three things you asked him to do. Uh, can you take us through those three things and how to go, honey? It went very pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> we went to In and Out. His yeah. request. There's three things I wanted. I wanted him to f sit in the front passenger seat of my car while we drove because he always hops in the back, hmm. and then I'm in front like a taxi driver. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, hello. We can't chat when you're back there. I think he does that because. He can uh, laze about back there. He can ignore me. He can ignore you. He can put his feet up. <laughs> um, he doesn't have to sit properly like a proper young gentleman. Uh, so he did sit in the passenger seat? He did, and he didn't complain. Life-changing. I wanted him to order his own food. Yes. He did push back on this. Uh, and we had a little tussle back and forth. Oh. But in the end, I said, you order your, what you want, and I will order what I want. Yeah. And he did a fabulous job. Yay. He, projected his voice and enunciated the he's, he's st he started the order right yeah i had him go first and, and it was uh the in and out people were outside doing the tablet thing yeah we went through the drive through but there was a human standing out there taking the orders because wow. the queue is pretty long at in and out our babies all scrums up the third thing was that we had to sit there and eat our food ah. and converse oh. and chat i understand lennox uh so we had a good time um we listened to some music mm. uh he told me a little bit about stuff going on at school did you get any tea did you get any hot goss how what's the drama like any um uh, did he name names nothing too juicy ah. um yeah i did i did get one comment from him that i'm too nosy <laughs> <laughs> He did. What was I asking him about the other day? And he's like, why y'all interrogating me? And I was like, uh, I'm just asking you questions, Lynn. I, I interrogate because I care. Yeah. But overall, it was a good time. And when we got home, he thanked me and said he had a good time. So Yay. worth it. I would say drive through is nice, but you got to go inside. We did. Yeah. Well, we did. After we got our food, we pulled into a shady parking spot and uh, we sat and ate our food and chatted for a while. Right. But I think going inside is very important because uh, there's just more elements to deal with. There's more stimuli. There might be a, a, a few unruly kids. Uh, there might be a, a Karen who might go off. 
at the uh, in and out employees. Um, there's just more to deal with in this uh, wild, wacky world we call life. Uh, maybe that'll be next, honey. Uh, bring him inside. And then, uh, oh, and then we ate. So my coworker, Pao Li, he, he buys this bag of seasoning from a gal on Facebook. I don't, I don't know. I don't ask questions. Um, but he gave me a couple uh, small samples, small sandwich baggies. One regular, one spicy, uh, and today we, well this weekend we bought some uh, chicken tendies, just uh, chicken strips, uh, raw, and then uh, you seasoned them, honey. Can you talk about the cooking process there? I just coated the chicken, the raw chicken tenders all over in this powder seasoning, yeah. and then I baked them in our toaster oven for about 22 minutes, Yeah, and the seasoning is bright neon red yeah it looks like talky dust yeah the flame and hot cheeto uh seasonings it was nuclear red yeah and my fingers were stained even oh. after multiple washes that's right that's right but it it turned out really good the chicken was juicy and tender super yummy and the seasoning was really good yeah very tasty uh we're asking pali for uh advice tips tricks life hacks etc he said to wash the chicken and then pat it I, you, mm, you just did the patting. I didn't wash the chicken, and I don't know if that's when? gross. I feel like I feel like people have very strong opinions. Like this is a very um, divisive topic. It is. So I don't know if I've angered people or if I'm doing the right thing. Why do you <laughs> wash? Why would you wash chicken? I, don't know. I know, I I know that's a thing, but not with soap, just with water, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I I don't think any kind of. I think it's just water, yeah. It was very odd, but you just patted it. It was super good. Uh, before eating it, I said, "Pow, um, what's what's the uh, the hot seasoning? One to ten. What would you rate it?" He said three. I would throw it up to a seven. Oh yeah, it was spicy for yeah. you and I. Yeah, it had some kick, but it was super good. And uh, props to this. Uh, Asian gal who sells this bag of seasoning on Facebook. Love it. I want more of it. But we've bought stuff from... You bought tamales, right? From a yes. lady on Facebook? Yes. I've bought multiple foods, food items off people on Facebook. And yeah. you, you meet in a parking lot and yeah. you hand over your cash. Yeah. It's, they, it's good. And they say, we got some speakers in the van if you want some. <laughs> you want some uh, knockoff cologne also in the trunk? Um yeah, circumventing the uh, the code <laughs> and all all sense, all common sense. Uh, but yeah, it was excellent. We had three more pieces, um, and we ate it with the. Oh, we got a big thing of Caesar salad. Yesterday, you wanted a big salad. I'm always craving a giant salad. Yeah, and no one in West Sac, I get. Is known for that, or I wish is, is, is upfront about that. Yeah, like we don't have a Jack's Urban Eats out here. Yeah, remember those Fresh Choice restaurants? Yes, yeah. I don't think those exist anymore. Yeah, we had a soup plantation down in San Diego. Um, Sizzler has salad, but eh, mm. eh. those chicken wings are what the Sizzler salad bar is all about. Um, but uh, yeah, it was we got one of those giant. Uh, Caesar salads, eight bucks. Uh, we housed it all. It was super yummy. Uh, the, the romaine was a little wilted, uh, which can be expected. But other than that, it was a bang up uh, lunch slash dinner. Liner, uh, you. So I see here in my notes, honey, you got a uh, prize for your reading, or can <laughs> can you explain it? What, what's going on here? There's a website called Goodreads yes. that I use to track all the books I want to read, all the books I have read, mm -hmm. and it's like my favorite website. I'm on it all, every day, pretty much. Yeah. Goodreads has something called a giveaway, and tons of books you can enter for a giveaway. The publishers are giving away 20 copies of this book, 30 copies of this book, and you can just scroll and scroll and sign up for as many as you want. And if you win, they notify you. I've been doing this for years. I've been entering. <laughs> I've never won a Goodreads giveaway. How many have you entered? Dozens? Hundreds? I, yeah. Wow. Hundreds. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I just scroll and scroll 
and I cross my fingers that one day I will win. Yeah. Lo and behold, I got a package in the mail mm -hmm. and I wasn't notified. They're right. supposed to send you an email. I got no notification, but I, it was from Macmillan Publishers, mm -hmm. New York, New York. And I open it up and it's a book that I don't recognize. Right. But I go on my Goodreads and I search up the book and sure enough, it's there in my list of my TBR to be read books, which means I did enter a giveaway. Yeah. Um, so it was a miracle. I finally won. And it was, it's deemed an ARC. Oh yeah. Something interesting I noticed is it said on the cover, this, it said advanced, advanced readers edition uh, or advanced readers copy. Gotcha. They're called, it's called an ARC. Yeah. These are the editions that publishers send out before the official publication. Right. And they send them to editors and yeah. readers. So the the final version of the book could have some slight changes to it from the ARC version of the book. Yeah. Um, and I hopped on Reddit to the Goodreads subreddit and yes. I explained what happened. And um, people replied that a lot of the giveaways are actually ARCs. Not all of them. Yeah. But a good chunk of them are. So I guess that's normal. You got a bunch of responses. Yeah. You got a bunch of likes on Reddit. What was the uh, oh. uh, dopamine? Adrenaline hits. Yay, yay. I'm validated. All my Goodread friends replied. <laughs> and we all were talking about the giveaways and everyone's experiences. And it's... this might lead to more, right? Somebody said that they won a couple of giveaways. And then the publisher just started sending them arcs yeah. that they didn't even sign up for. Like they somehow got on the publisher's yeah. reading list. So that would be cool if I just started getting free books. You're going to be a book influencer. And they're going to start uh, giving a swag. I'm about to start my YouTube channel. Try to uh, buy. Is your opinion for sale, honey? Yes. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice ethics there. Uh, did you read the book? Do, do you like the book? How did that go? I've not read it. I just okay. put it on our bookshelf along with the 30 other books on our bookshelf that I haven't read. <laughs> Do you plan to, honey? Yes. You got to read it. You got to lie and say it's the best book ever. <laughs> Shakespearean. <laughs> Michael Crichton ain't got nothing on this insert author here. Uh, you got to pump it up. I will. I'll get to it. Something about the blurb must have intrigued me because I signed up for the giveaway. But uh, to be honest, I don't recognize the author. Uh, I don't even know what the book's about. Gotcha. But I, it will be read. Okay. It, it's it's number uh, 893 on your <laughs> to-be-read list. How many books are actually on your TBR? Uh, 1,400. <laughs> 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 Book 1,401 is an ARC <laughs> I uh, look forward to your uh, critic. My critique. first, my first arc. I was actually really excited. I felt like a a booktuber girly or something right. like that. You got to move it up, darling, to number one. Okay. Get your opinion. Build some buzz. You know, actually, if I read it and I um, post a review on Goodreads yeah. before it's actually officially published, yeah. ooh, that that will be something. That's what I'm saying. Macmillan, Macmillan, and NY, NY will. Uh, We'll start sending us crap and uh, we'll be like those influencers with just tons of uh, Amazon box everywhere. <laughs> Boxes everywhere. Just lots of uh, content and stuff. Uh, I see here in my notes, honey, you bought some makeup with a unique ingredient in it. Can you tell us more? I bought some skincare mm -hmm. from Beauty of Joseon, which is a Korean company. Oh, K-Beauty is really hot right now. And it's um, snail mucin, which is really hot in the skincare world right now. It's okay, a I got the product. I got the snail. What's muse? I don't know, like <laughs> excretion. <laughs> oh dear. Nectar, nectar oh. of snail. Okay. Uh, where did you hear about it? How did you know about it? How much did it cost? I get videos. All well, I'm subscribed to some like beauty type channels and whatnot. <laughs> But it's always popping up in my For You page, mm -hmm. like just skincare people mm -hmm. and products. So Snail Mucin, I see it all over the place. Mm. And this brand, Beauty of Joseon, um, I, I've heard of it. So a couple of YouTubers recommended it. And I I bought a couple of products from them that I've been using for months. Oh, right, right. And I, I did some research and I decided to buy the snail stuff yeah. and incorporate it into my skincare routine. 
I've been using it for a week mm -hmm. and I do like it, I think. Like I, I apply it and I feel my skin kind of tightening a little bit. Ah. And so far, no bad reaction. I have sensitive skin, so I have to be careful. Yeah. A few years ago, you bought some uh, makeup from the interwebs and your face broke out. Got <laughs> red oh, and bumpy. Gosh. And I had a really bad reaction. That was really scary. I had to go to the doctor and get some stuff to clear it up. Yeah. But so. the snail mucin? Mucin. I don't know if I'm saying that right, even. Hmm. Uh, has secret uh, properties or... It, 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 that, that's the key ingredient that's supposed to yeah. do something. Yeah. You know, what? I after I bought it, I was thinking, I hope they don't hurt the snails <laughs> in the making of this. I, I feel like I should have researched that a little bit more. Is there snail animal testing with this makeup? Uh, but you're, you bought four things, right? It was like 70 bucks or something? Yes. Is that higher than normal? Um, No, that's actually... If like to Ulta or whatever. I buy... I buy this this brand online, and then my other half of my skincare stuff I just get at Target, hmm. and the price is about the same ah. as what I'm paying at Target. So, okay, well, am I pretty for you, honey? You are, darling. Well, you are. That's what matters. I'm just glad you didn't break out again. I know. Actually, I bought a couple new products, and I just started using the snail first because yeah. I was like, let me try one at a time. Yeah. To make sure I don't, I'm not trying to use multiple new things at once. I gotta yeah. be careful. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's good. And is it going to be in your routine? So, you're because you're you use new stuff. Do you like jettison old stuff? And are you always <laughs> having things coming in now? What, what's it like being a woman? It's so it's so hard being a girl. <laughs> I know, dude. I've been trying to curate a good skincare routine for quite a while. Yeah, and so I'm I'm like I'm winnowing here and there. I'm I finally have it down. I okay. think what I've got going on right now is good, and I'm going to stick with it. Okay. I like it. Okay, where are we done, Henny? Yes. Okay, well, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, review, and rate, or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use our promo code for Beauty by JC on. <laughs> our promo code is SNAIL. No, Museon. How would you even spell I don't know. It? Sounds like <laughs> Muslix. Uh, mucus. We don't have... Snail mucus. <laughs> there you go. I know. It's got to be gross. Ugh. What about the snails, honey? Just don't think about it. It comes in a pretty little bottle. It's fine. You don't have to think about what's inside. If you, don't wanna, if you want something not to think about, uh, how about how they raise chickens uh, for our consumption? They feed them, feed them, feed them. To where they can't even stand on their two legs, so they don't move, and uh, they get fat, and they have horrible lives, and then they whoop, cut them. They kill them after only a few weeks. But Costco's better. They don't feed them as much. These chickens stand on their two feet, and I guess they prance around. They do the chicken dance, uh, and they have a lovely six-week life. Have fun enjoying your tendies. Uh, <laughs> please be sure to use our promo code. We don't have promo code. Good pay my pair of social podcast friends. I love you. My wife and I love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, my wife may put snail, musli, muslix, <laughs> mucinix. That's what it is on her face but she's still a good person and we're still good people thank you for caring thank you for sharing thank you for listening we hope you have a wonderful day slash night oh, bye bye and a oop oop we got chicken is that crispy juicy tender i can't eat no longer and a oop